So now we're going to try to uh, see how we can figure out what is the efficient unemployment rate <coughs> in the matching model uh, and you know what it depends on, how we can compute it, how we can illustrate it in the, in the model that we've seen. So first, I guess the first step is to try to see, to define what it means to have an efficient unemployment rate and try to understand you know, what are the kind of elements that are involved uh, here. So what do I mean with efficient? So efficient means uh, means you know, what maximizes uh, social welfare. That's what we mean with efficiency. Okay. So that's typical definition of efficiency. So what is social welfare? Okay. Um, so social welfare, it's, it's a measure of, you know, the, the welfare, the well-being of a society. So what is social welfare here? Like what are the determinants of the well-being of um, workers who are part of our model? So what is um, social welfare in our model? <coughs> So at a general level, usually social welfare um, is the general definition of social welfare is the sum of the welfare of all individuals in uh, an economy. Okay. <clears throat> So each um, <clears throat> each individual has some welfare, and you know at the individual level, what we call welfare is just the same as uh, is just the same as utility. You know, usually when we build an economic model, we assume that. Um, all the agents that are involved in the model have some utility function that tells us what is the utility they derive from various actions. Um, so welfare and utility are just synonyms. Um, so if you, if you add up the utility of all individuals that are in the model, that are in the economy, that gives you your social welfare. Okay? Uh, so it's kind of the aggregate utility of the everybody in, in the economy. So here's the question, we want to build the social welfare in our model. Um, so what is the utility of an individual in the model? Okay. Uh, how much utility uh, do you have when you're part of the model that we've described? Yeah. And so here, to kind of simplify the analysis, we're going to make a bunch of assumptions that will make it very easy to compute social welfare. Uh, so we'll assume that um, So we're going to make assumptions to um, simplify social welfare. So because you know, if you have a simple social welfare function, then you will be able to uh, you know have a fairly simple analysis of what is uh, efficient unemployment. Okay. So first off, so we're going to assume that. Uh, Employed workers, unemployed workers, they have a linear utility uh, function over uh, consumption. Okay. And so if you've taken uh, micro classes uh, and so on, so you know that that means that um, basically we'll assume that all workers are, are what we call risk neutral. 
And the reason we do that is that under this assumption that any point in time and independent of your wealth, whether you're employed or unemployed, everybody, so the reason why this is going to simplify is that everybody values consumption the same. Okay? So it's going to be very easy to aggregate uh, our utility, our individual utilities, because we all value one unit of consumption the same, so we can just add up all the consumption in the economy to get the total value of consumption. Because you see, if different people valued consumption differently, we couldn't just add up the total amount of consumption in the economy, the total output. We would have to weight all of this uh, individual consumption by the specific marginal utility that that consumption delivered to each individual. That would become complicated. It, you know, it's doable, but it would be complicated. So here, to simplify, we're going to assume this linear utility uh, function of our consumption. So what that means is that all individuals the value consumption the same. And what that further implies is that we can compute the aggregate utility from consumption by just aggregating consumption. is just the same as output. Okay, um, so that's one thing. So that's taken care of the consumption side of things. So the next step is to think about uh, the disutility from work or utility from leisure. Uh, basically, um, so what about this utility from work? You know, in, in standard kind of models, um, usually we assume that if people work, that there's a cost, you know, to working more. And so that's why people don't work all the time. Um, so here we're going to um, abstract from that. We'll just assume that people want to work like a finite amount of time, say like eight hours a day. They, um, and so they enter the labor market and either they have a job, they work and that's fine. That doesn't cause them, you know, they're happy to go to work. I mean, happy, they just go to work, that's what they do. Or they're unemployed um, and in that case, they search for a job and that gives them, uh, and that's going to give them the same utility as if they were working. So basically people are always kind of working, either you're working for a firm or you're trying to, you're searching for a job, doing interviews, um, designing your CV and whatever, and that gives you the same flow utility. So the time, whether you spend your time in a firm or you spend your time searching for a job, you will get exactly uh, the same kind of value. Uh, so this may be costly, you know, people who work may incur a cost and people who search for jobs incur a cost, or everybody may get, you know, some utility from being busy, whatever. So key thing is that everybody gets the same value of time, okay? And so that at the end, it's, you know, whether people are employed or unemployed is irrelevant, okay? Uh, in terms of um, utility, flow utility of, of time. Um, so we'll assume that the disutility from work is exactly the same if you want as the disutility uh, from um, searching for a job. You know, and, and all of this may be zero, you know, people may just think that that's just what they have to do with their work search for, for a job and they don't have a negative value attached to it or everybody may be happy to be busy and this, in fact, may be a, you know, when I say this utility, it doesn't have to be negative, people may be happy to work, may be happy to be searching for a job. But the key thing is that the 
Um, this utility framework is the same as the utility from searching for a job, so that basically the value of time is the same for employed and unemployed workers. Um, and so that means that everybody, you know, get the same utility whether they work or not. So it's something we don't have, you know, we don't have to care about. It's something that's fixed basically uh, in the economy. You know, by adjusting the unemployment rate, you're not going to have any effect on that because whether people work or not work, they get the same flow value of uh, time. Okay, I mean, and so, so these are the two assumptions we make. So one, that we are not going to care about the value of time, and, and that's a strong assumption because, in fact, there is a lot of evidence that people who are unemployed, in fact, they are much more miserable than people who are employed. So it seems that being unemployed actually as a, as a, is, is costly, uh, so the value of time is much lower for people who are unemployed than employed. Even, you know, it's not about having less income, you know, even controlling for consumption, if people consume exactly the same, people who are unemployed are much more miserable. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there are psychological reasons for that. And one of the main reasons is that having a job for many people is what gives, uh, keeps you busy, gives a meaning to your life, make, gives sense to your life. Um, whereas a lot of people who are unemployed, they feel that their life has no meaning, they feel like they failed in some sense, and so they are quite miserable. Uh, so in general, you know, we would want to generalize that and allow for a different value of time and in particular explore what happens if unemployed workers are indeed uh, much more miserable. Um, or some people argue that it's the opposite, you know, that unemployed workers should be happy because they have lots of leisure time. Anyway, so it's something that we may want to, uh, to extend and in fact we are going to extend that and allow for that later on. But for now, just to simplify, we're going to assume that the value of time is the same for everybody. Uh, and we're going to assume that the marginal value of consumption is also the same. So, under these two assumptions, uh, <coughs> so unemployed, employed have the same value of time, so we don't care about that. Employed, unemployed, in fact, everybody has a linear utility function, so they value consumption the same. So, under these two assumptions, um, basically, social welfare, is determined solely by um, aggregate um, consumption, which is the same as aggregate output. So in a world like that, you just need to know how much is produced in your economy to know what is the social welfare. Okay? So, you know, obviously it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a simplification, but it captures this idea and that's something that's very prevalent. You know, a lot of governments, they want to, you know, they talk a lot about GDP, they talk about GDP growth, you know, so they seem to be, you know, it seems to be an idea that how much your economy produces, how much output there is out there is very relevant for um, social welfare, it's something that, uh, you know, that, that matters a lot. And so here we've made two assumptions so that <coughs> aggregate output alone determines social welfare. Okay, and we'll, we'll try to um, kind of extend a little bit that definition later on. So in a world like this, in which social welfare is solely determined by aggregate output, you know, we can redefine efficient unemployment. We know that efficiency means maximizing social welfare. We know that social welfare is determined by aggregate output. So here, it means that um, by definition, so we can have a definition, <coughs> the efficient unemployment rate So is the unemployment rate uh, 
um, that maximizes output. Okay, so we want to what we want to determine is the level of unemployment that's going to maximize the output produced by the economy. That's what's going to be our efficient uh, unemployment rate. Okay. 